Hi everyone, welcome to Mastering SharePoint Document Libraries, a guide to effective information architecture. I'm Liza Tinker, a SharePoint consultant here at Webvine, and in this video, we'll dive into best practices for building document libraries, focusing on information architecture. We'll cover key concepts, show some practical examples, and build a document library together. So let's get started. Firstly, we're going to talk about information architecture. So what is information architecture? It's all about organizing and structuring information in a way that makes it easy to find and use. It's the blueprint that helps us manage and present data effectively. In the context of SharePoint, this involves setting up libraries, folders, metadata, and views. These are the key components that we utilize to build an effective information architecture in SharePoint. Libraries are containers for storing documents and other files. Folders are used to group related documents within libraries. Metadata is descriptive information that helps in categorizing and finding documents. And views are customized ways to display the content in a library, making it easier to find what you're looking for. To illustrate these concepts, we are going to use the example of a marketing department. We will use what is known as a functional classification scheme to organize the marketing department's documents. So what exactly is a functional classification scheme? Firstly, we are going to describe what a functional classification scheme is in the context of a marketing department. A functional classification scheme organizes information based on what the organization does, which are its functions and activities rather than its structure which in organizations can change. This ensures easier document retrieval regardless of restructuring. For example, for a marketing department, we might have functions like advertising, brand management, content creation, and event planning. Within those different functions, we then have the activities these are the activities that form part of that function. So how might this look in SharePoint? For our marketing department within a small organization, we might have a marketing library and then use folders within the library for each function and then folders for each activity within each function. We can then use metadata to organize the different document types. And to help organize items further, we could then create additional views to show content in different ways to make it easier to find content as the library grows. So in SharePoint, we can set up SharePoint libraries or folders for each major function. And then within these libraries, we create folders and or metadata to further organize documents. So we have libraries that are the containers for storing documents and other files. And we have folders which are used to group related documents within libraries. Then we have metadata, which is descriptive information that helps in categorizing and finding documents, which is crucial for enhancing searchability and organization. Then we have views, which allows us to present the information in a way that suits our needs. So information architecture in SharePoint is about organizing content so it's easy to find and use by designing a functional classification scheme and setting up libraries, folders, metadata, and views, we can significantly improve efficiency and access to information. Now that we understand the concept of information architecture, let's jump in and build an effective document library in SharePoint. 
I'm now going to show you how to create a marketing documents library like the one you see on the screen. This library has different folders for the different functions within marketing, such as advertising, brand management, content creation, and event planning. We are using a metadata column called function to also track the function that the document belongs to, as well as a column for tracking the document type. We have some different views for viewing the documents, such as a view for event planning, so that we can easily see all documents that are part of the events planning function, as well as a view for templates, so that we can see all templates across all functions in the library. I've also created a flat view of the library so that you can see all content without folders. So now let's create our own. Go to your SharePoint site and navigate to the homepage and click New Document Library. Here you have a few choices for creating your document library. You can create a blank library to start with, or you can create a library using the structure of an existing library, or you can select from one of the templates that is provided by Microsoft or any templates that your organization may have created for your use. For this session, we are going to start with a blank library. Name the library Marketing Documents. Give the library a description. Then select Create. We now have a new document library to begin working with. Now we're going to set up different folders for the different functional areas within marketing. Firstly, we are going to add an advertising folder. Then a brand management folder. A content creation folder. And finally, an event planning folder. Now let's add some documents to our library. I'm going to go into the event planning folder and upload some documents from here. We now have some event planning documents in the library. Now we're going to set up some metadata columns. Within SharePoint Online, you can create columns directly on the library page. Select Add Column, and we're going to create a new column. We're going to select a Choice Column, then Next. We're going to start by calling it Document Type. It's a Choice Column, and the choices for this column are Templates, Forms, Plans, Folder, and guidelines. Then select save. You can then drag and drop the column into the order that you prefer. We will now create another column called function. So again, we select add column. It's a choice. Next and then the name of the column is function. The choices within here are advertising, brand management, content creation, and event planning. Then select save. I'll now drag that into position. And the reason that we've created that function column is that we're going to be able to track all the documents within marketing via that column using metadata. 
We've just created new columns in the library, but there are also other default columns available that are out of the box columns that automatically track metadata, which you can add to the view. To access these, select Add Column, and this time you're going to select Show or Hide Columns. Under Edit View Columns, you can deselect and select the columns that you'd like to appear in the view. I'm going to add Created and Created By and select Apply. These columns have now appeared. Now that we have some metadata columns, let's update the metadata for the documents in the event planning folder. You can update the metadata in bulk by selecting Edit in Grid View. We then select each items like we're working in a spreadsheet. So I'm going to select Event Planning and you can also filter down and then the different document types. When finished completing the metadata, select Exit Grid View. Before moving on to showing the power of metadata by creating views of the content, I'm going to show you an easy way to update metadata if the metadata for a particular folder is consistent. For example, within our folders, the function column will always be the function of the folder that you are in. So for this column, we can add a default option for each of the folders so that, for example, when you are in the advertising folder, any documents you upload into that folder will automatically be tagged as advertising. To do this, we navigate to the library settings from the gear, then select more library settings. We then select underneath general settings, column default value settings. We then select the folder that we're going to configure. So for this, it's advertising. And the column is function. We select use this default value and type the value in and select OK. We then go back to the document library. select the folder and when we now upload a file it will automatically be tagged as advertising. Now that our documents have metadata we are going to create some views to organize our documents further. In SharePoint libraries you can create custom views to make it easy for users to find documents for instance, since this library is going to contain a lot of templates related to the different functions, I might like to see all the templates that are available in the one view. So I'm going to create a view that only shows documents that are tagged as templates. To create this new view, I'm going to select Create New View from the drop down. I'm going to call it Templates. It's going to be a public view. You can also have private views that are only viewable by those that create them. But in this instance, we're going to create a public view and select Create. Now that we've created this view, we need to edit it. So from the drop down, we select Edit Current View. And this is where we make the changes. So I'm going to deselect Created and Created By as I don't want them in my view. I'm going to scroll down and under filter, I'm going to select show items only when the following is true. I'm going to select document type is equal to templates. So we're only going to show documents in this view that have been categorized as templates. I scroll down under folders. I'm going to select show all items without folders as I want to see all the documents outside of their folder structure. Then I'm going to select OK. Now when I go up to this particular view 
and select templates, I can see all the templates within all of the different functions. I now also want to create a view that only shows me all event planning templates. Since I already have a view that is set to show all templates, I can use this view as a starting point. So I'm now in the templates view and I'm going to select save view as. I'm going to call it event planning templates and select save. I now have this new view. I still need to go and edit it. So from the drop down, I'm going to select edit current view. And when I scroll down under filter, I'm going to add and when column function is equal to event planning. Scroll down and select OK. So now in this view, I'm showing all templates related to event planning. Another way to sort and filter your content is via the columns headings. From the heading of any column, select the drop down and you can group by that column, such as by the document type. And you can also filter by the function. So at the moment, I'm showing all advertising documents and they're grouped by the document type. As I'd like to save this view, I can use this as a template for creating a new view. So from the drop down, I select Save View As. I'm going to call this Advertising Documents. I'm going to make it a private view. Select save. Now, if I jump back to a different view, such as the all documents view, and then I select advertising documents, you'll see that it has saved my settings. Now you can see we have the document library utilizing a functional classification scheme with a well-planned and organized information architecture by utilizing folders, metadata and views. The secret to an efficient library lies in good planning with an emphasis on information architecture best practices. If you found this video helpful and if you're looking for tailored consulting or training services, head over to our website for more information. Thanks for watching.